go grocery shopping and I don't have bread. Okay, but don't, there's no judgment because that's why I love this church. What the Bible just say in the last scripture, there will be no judgment. So here we go. We're going to start taking our communion. Um, before I start, let me open up in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much, God, for everything you've done, oh God. We just thank you for bringing us this far. We ask that you just bless our service on today, even after the communion. God, bless me, anoint me, oh Father God. Decrease Thumbelina so that you can increase and that your word penetrates the hearts of your people, oh God. And, and just bless our commun communion on today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So, for I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took the bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. You may take and eat. After the same manner, also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death until he comes. Take and drink. So good morning, everybody. It's so good to see everybody in their beautiful faces. I am excited because today, not only do I get to see you on Zoom, but I get to physically hug and kiss each and every one of you. I hope everybody is able to make it today. Bernice is like, yay, 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 yay. So excited because, you know, our church is just so full of love. So today we are meeting. And Lamar, the slide was up, but it was under, under me. So that was my bad, my bad. So Melissa, you can put the slide up for today. Uh, with the address, we, uh, like Brother Lamar said, we will be meeting at Bonefish Grill today at 1 p.m. Uh, in Manalapan. If anybody's familiar, it's over there by the Target. So we will see you guys. And we are going straight to the back. There's a room by the bathroom. And you could just say TG or pass the thumb. They'll, they'll direct you right to the back. So we'll see you guys soon. And I'm going to get right into my topic which Melissa, you can go to the next slide. So today my topic is, da -da 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 -da. Melissa like, no. No, because remember we had communion after announcements. Oh. <laughs> it's okay. That's all right. Here we go. Right. That's all right. So my topic today is do more. Do more, two words, but look at the topic. It doesn't just say do more. There's actually a period at the end. Do more, period. This message today is, is, I pray that it will inspire you to want to do more, not just here at church, but in the, just in the, in the kingdom of God at home, everywhere. So um, I got a few questions to ask you guys, and I need you to be straight up and honest with yourself this, these questions are not a jab to anybody, anything. These are just questions that I want you to do a self-assessment, okay? So our last Sunday in a physical building was January 23rd. Can you believe that? We have not been in a building since January the 23rd. And since we've been on Zoom, how much have you done to pour into our Zoom services? No jab to anybody, just be honest with yourself. Well, you're probably thinking, pass the thumb, what does Zoom need? It looks easy, there's nothing to do. Well, there's slides, there's pictures, there's scriptures, there's announcements, there's a lot of stuff in the background. There's a lot of preparation for Zoom. How about this? Have you invited people to your Zoom that are at home doing nothing? Be honest with yourself, let's, let's keep it 100. Y'all know we're not here to just play around. Let's Think about this. Have you invited people who you know are at home doing anything to your Zoom? How about this? Have you fasted since we've been on? Now we're talking about since we've been on Zoom. Since, have you fasted wholeheartedly and gave it your all? Now, when we're at the church, we give it our all. It's 100%. Have you fasted wholeheartedly and gave it your all? I'm just asking. Don't forget, 
My topic is do more, period. Have you called to ask anybody, what can I do to help with the children's ministry since we've been closed? Think about it. Have you called Michelle? Have you asked, what could I do? Some of you have, I get it. I'm just asking questions. This has no bearings on anyone or anything. The topic is just do more, period. Forget asking how you can help, right? Did God give you something to do and you haven't done it because you're on Zoom? Or how about, you might be like, Pastor, listen, I've been doing work while I'm on Zoom. Well, I got a question for you. Have you been consistent? Have you done your job in excellence? I'm just asking, I really want you to think about this. Or how about this? Have you been praying for individuals at our church since you haven't seen them? Not like, oh, bless Sister Sarah, amen. Have you really diligently prayed for somebody since you haven't seen them? Have you prayed for me as your leader? Have you said, what can I do to alleviate some pressure for pastor or other people who are doing things? Ask yourself this question. Don't forget the name of my topic is do more, period. Did you want to do something for the church and your response in your mind was, nah, pastor ain't gonna let that, she ain't gonna let that go. Or, nah, pastor wasn't like that, she would just say no. If so, that's probably 100% the wrong attitude to have. Stop worrying about what I would say and do what God has told you to do. And remember, y'all know the enemy get on my nerve. With his, he get on my nerve. He get on my last nerve with his slick self. He get on my nerve. And with his slick self, he will make you believe that so you won't move. He'll make you believe Zoom don't need anything. We're still a kingdom of God. We're still kingdom building online 100%. Mind you, this has nothing to do with anybody. My topic is do more, period. Right? So the devil, he loves, y'all know how y'all like cake and cookie. Well, let me talk about myself because y'all are smaller than me and I, I understand it. How I like sweets and you know, Denise and Lamar used to bring me, what's those little sweet and sour patches? And I would tell them I don't eat this and we'll eat the whole bag while they're still outside. I, Lamar, did, am I telling the truth? They would stop by and bring, now Denise, they bring no little bag. She bought the big bag that you're supposed to give out to the church. I would literally tell them, I do not eat this stuff and we'll eat the whole bag before they pull off. My, now, the way I love that, that sour candy, like this, it's the same way the devil loves procrastination. He loves like that. Mm, feels so good to him. It's the same way he loves procrastination. It's the same way he loves stagnation. It's the same way he loves all of those negative thoughts. Oh, and his all-time favorite is division. He, lo he loves when you can divide somebody. That's his favorite thing. And if you ever studied your opponent, I remember uh, when my husband was alive, there was a book about me studying the enemy. And I was so scared to read that book. I was so afraid to read that book because I just did, you don't want to go too deep because you don't want to be exposed. I, does everybody get that? You ever did that? I don't really want, but a lot of people do that with the Bible. And he would say, that's the dumbest thing you could do. Learn your opponent. And if you learn your opponent, you will know all of this is his favorite things to do. And you should be on alert. I'm always talking about being on alert. Wake up, wake up, wake up and watching his nonsense. But if God tells you to do something, I promise you by the time it gets to me, I already know. And it's time for me to tell you to do more, period. My prayer for TG is that God uses me as a leader and as, a, as an example for everybody to say, let me get up and do more. Not just in the church. Don't, don't think this is about church. Don't miss the message thinking, what did I do? Get that out of your mind. Because don't forget, that's how the enemy works. What is she talking about? Is she angry? She... Get that out of your mind. I'm telling you, we must do more, period. Not just in church, but in your life. Do more. In your home. Do more. In your community. Who's helped the outreach ministry? How about doing work in other people's lives? Doing more. Listen, TG has already been established and God's plan for us has been written. And I don't care what nobody says, there's no devil in hell that could stop us. And we know that. We've seen it, 
it's not happening, it's not going down. But today I wanna encourage you to do more. This is not a self-pity trip. Oh, I shoulda, coulda, woulda. Nah, whatever I didn't do, it's all good. I'm about to stand up and do more. I want you to leave inspired and feel encouraged today. And don't wait for a pastor to tell you, please. If God tells you, this is the problem. A lot of people wanna do what they wanna do. This church is 100% spirit led. And if you are doing what you're supposed to do, the spirit will lead you. Get up and do it. There's so many ministries, so many things in this church that have to be birthed, so many. And we all have the responsibility to do more. We have all been a part of TG in this establishment. We already know it's going to be the bomb. When God takes us off the map, listen, I've been talking like this since day one. Can, it, can y'all put your hand in the grave? I told you what was coming. I told you about the storms. I told you what was gonna happen. I told you I ain't gonna be here forever watching this. We gotta go out into the world and do more, period. So all of us knows what it takes to operate this church. And I'm here to tell you, we are going to do nothing but grow and get bigger. We are going to get bigger, so do more. I was at the conference where I think they, the, it was Max. The, they sold all the tickets, which was 10,000 tickets. It was at the uh, Charlotte, North Carolina Theater. And everybody knows I'm really close to my girlfriend, Becky, who went. And um, I went through my school because, of course, it was like a VIP for me um, to sit. But as I'm sitting there, I'm looking at the grandeur of the whole thing, the lights, everything. I looked at her and I said, this is how TG's gonna be. This is it. I saw it clear as day. It didn't look like a church with no steeple on the top of it. It didn't look like what you think. It was grand. It was grand. And in that moment, I said, I, I just had this thing like, oh my God, this is how it's gonna be. Her eyes woke up and she said, I know. I already know. So I know that there's just so much in store for TG, but what are we doing? You know, I watched our church and all of us could agree because I've done it. We go up and down. We go up and down. That's the Christian walk. That's normal. You will have trouble, but don't worry. We know the end. The God has already given us everything we needed for this establishment. And like I said, nobody, nobody's gonna stop it. The people we started with, I told you from the rip, I told everybody from, the, from day one, the people we started with, they're not gonna be here in the end. That's because this is, the, this is the way life goes. They're not gonna be here at the end. And I hope that you are encouraged to do more. We're gonna read a passage that we've read a gazillion times in the Bible, in the book of Mark chapter four, 35 verse, um, chapter four, verses 35 to 41 the New King James Version. We've, we've heard the story a gazillion times about how Jesus had to calm the storm. But I, wanna, I want us to look at it a little different today. So verse 35, don't forget I'm talking about doing more. On the same day when evening had come, keep in mind, Jesus had already walked around. He's been doing the healings and everything. Now, go back, 35, on the same day, when evening had come, he said to them, let us cross over to the other side. Listen, that was an instruction. This is the most important part of this scripture. Let us call, cross over to the other side. When God gives his instruction, he already gives the destination. He gave, I meant the instruction. When God gave the instruction, he gave us the destination. He said it will happen. Here's the thing. We're going to cross on the other side. TG is born to transform a generation. Done. Put a period at the end. Guaranteed. We're going to cross over the other side. And he said, if he said it, it'll happen. Same goes for us. He set the destination for TG. However, he did not give us the itinerary. The difference from the destination is we know, we know what we're going to the end. We're going across. The itinerary is how we get there. Remember, I said, do more, period, okay? 
So right there, that first sentence gave us the instruction, verse 36. Now, when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was. And other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling. So now we have been obedient. We got in the boat. TG has been obedient. We got in the boat. We did what we're supposed to do. We started the church. We got going. We started ministry. We were pushing, pushing, pushing. TG got in the boat. Now we got some waves. Whoa, this is beating up our boat. People that came in trying to tell us how we should run our church, what we should do, how we're doing wrong. We don't got beat up a little bit. Now the water's coming in because we don't got no church. What are you saying? But don't forget I said, do more, period, right? We don't have no church. So the enemy with his raggedy self done showed his face and he thinks he's winning. He thinks he's winning, but we already had the instruction. We just didn't have the itinerary. We already got the destination. The destination was for us to transform a generation, my God. We got work to do, but are we doing the work? Again, do more, period. Now it feels like the water is coming in our boat. My God, now we have done all of this work and we don't have a building. But here's the thing we forget. We forgot who was in the boat with us. You cannot lose when we got him. The guy who gave the instruction is in the boat with us. There's no loss. So we call on him and we said, Jesus, we don't have a church. What are you going to do about it? Let's read uh, verse 38 now. I hope everybody is getting where I'm going. So now the water is beating everything and the waves are filling up. Verse 38 says, but he was in the stern, which is the bottom of the boat, asleep on a pillow. My boy was knocked out. While your storm is going on, God is like, ain't paying you no mind. Because when I gave you the destination, and I didn't give you the itinerary. I gave you the instructions. So I'm at rest right now. Verse 38, 38. And they awoke him and said to him, teacher, do you not care that we're perishing? Perishing. God, don't you not see? You call us to do a work. We have been obedient. We got it as vote. TG is doing the work. Now, mind you, he had already given TG the instructions to transform a generation, but he didn't give the itinerary. He gave us the destination. So of course, you know, you have to do more because I've given the destination. Now I'm sleeping and y'all jokers are waking me up. What do you want? What are you worried about? Let's look at verse nine, 39. Sorry, look at verse 39. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. But he said to them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? Jesus literally gets up, rebukes the wind. He told the storm straight up. Imagine this, we're, we're in trouble. We feel like, oh God, where's our church? We're in this boat. We got the water rising, people beating us up. We got negativity. We got this. Everybody's gotten lax. We're in the boat. And now we're like, Jesus, wake up. He's like, yo, what's up? Yo, all right, chill. Wind, knock it off. And he, the wind is like, hey, yo, Jane, I ain't know you was in the boat. I, we wouldn't even bother you if we knew you was at the bottom of the boat because they didn't see him. So he tells the wind to knock it off. He rebukes the wind and then he turns around and rebukes them. He turns around and he rebukes them at where is your faith? Remember, James 2 and 26 says, faith without works is dead. Where's your faith? You mean to tell me a little wind got to you? You thought you was going to die? Somebody came in your church and said something? You thought you was going to die? The guy closed the church down. Mind you, you ain't even have a contract. You lost nothing nothing. Are you kidding me? People are talking about you. So you think you're going to die? 
The enemy throws stones and they're not even landing on you. And you waking me up. I've equipped you when I sent you. I need you to do more, period. Listen, they were given power. Think about this. Who else just got power? TG, straight up. We felt it. We saw it. He gave them the same thing he gave to us. What are we doing with it? Are we doing what they did with it? We calling on Jesus. Use your power. You have the power. And he's like, just like us, are we using it? God is like, stop playing with the power that I gave you and do more with it. Do more, period. And I'm not just talking about church. When God gives us a destination, he equips us for whatever the itinerary is. We're already equipped. He has given us everything we need. Do more and you'll get more. Period. Is everybody following me? I'm almost done. I'm almost done. The question is to do more, have you tapped in? Can you honestly sit in your seat right now on a Sunday morning and say, I've tapped in. Honest to God. I've tapped in. I've tapped in. You know what? There's nobody on this Zoom who can't do more. Everybody on, even me, we all could do, all of us. Let's take it. Take this. We could all do more, even me. We could study more. There's no end to that. There's no limit. Do more, period. You can fast more. You don't need TG's week to go on a month's fast. I remember talking to Terrence and we were hollering. He said him and Melissa went on a Daniel's fast. I think this was like, Terrence, this was like a year ago or something like that. At the Two years ago. And his mother had a birth, whose mother? Melissa's mom had a birthday party. His mom had a birthday party. They're on a Daniel's fast. Now I told Terrence, he's, that's why him and Melissa are blessed because they're really saved. I, if I'm going to a party, I'm not, I'm just saying, don't judge me. I'm not fasting. I'm not, especially if I knew the fast was planned. If the party was planned before the fast, uh uh-uh, the party coming first. I'm just saying, don't judge me, but I'm required to do more too. I got to do more. So Terry said, him and Melissa, they at the party, having a good old time. It's time to eat, but they on the Daniels fast. And they eating, what was it, Terrence? They had to get a, a vegetable meal. I said, bruh, vegetable meal? Not, not, not I, said Pam. They mm-hmm. literally stuck to the fast and mm-hmm. was dedicated to what the promise that they promised the Lord. Even mm-hmm. during the part, I commend them. I said, Terrence, if God called me to do a Daniel fast, it's going to be a problem. I got it. I'm probably going to have a, a little cake. I know I'm going to mess up the first three weeks. And you only give me four weeks, I'm guaranteed going to mess up the first three because I'm eating a little biscuits. I know. And then I'm going to be like, Dag, I forgot. I already know. Don't judge me. Judge yourself. But even in that, I am required to do more. Period. These People went and fasted for, they were just fasting because it was just time to fast. It wasn't that we needed this, we needed that. No, God, I appreciate you. We appreciate, we, we give thanks for all that we have and all that, we, that we're that we given, that you blessed our children. We're just going to do a little bit more. And to whom much is given, much is required. But when you do more, you get more. That's how it works. People say, oh, Dumbelina, oh, you, you got so many blessings and stuff. Their results because I'm putting in the time. I'm spending the time staying in your word. Fast more, spend more time with God. Operate more out of your gifts. Oh, I don't know what my gifts are. Wow. You know how you find out what, the, what they are? You do more, period. You want to know where you're supposed to be? Somebody asked me, I don't know if it was you, Lamar, or somebody asked me, how do you know where you stand with God? Somebody asked me or something like that. Or your friend, somebody asked, how do you know where you stand with God? You know. I can tell you, if I wasn't praying all week, I could tell you where I am today with God. I think you got a little attitude because I didn't pray all week. You And if you were fasting and praying and doing what Terrence and Melissa were doing, eating vegetables at the party, I'm not eating no vegetables at the party. I'm going to, the Bible said, God forgives 70 times seven. That would be one. I need, I need one of those. Cause I'm eating all this food platter and all. they had crab cakes and stuff. I can't leave that there, God. That's a sin. So many people are hungry. <laughs> people are hungry. We can't leave these crab cakes on the table for some vegetables, my boy. God, please. But, but that goes to show you, you do more, you get more. How dedicated. 
in your in your in your life with Christ, in your life with your community, on your job. How could are you on time? Did you get to work on time? Did you get to church on time? Did you get to the kids' school play on time? What are we doing? It don't matter, Pastor. You're right. I don't worry about what I did yesterday because the devil will play on that playground of yesterday. I do nothing all week. And now by Friday, you depressed of all the stuff you didn't do last week. Knock it off. Cut it off. It don't matter what I did and didn't do. But Pastor, today, I am going to take the oath to do more, period. Listen, TG needs work always. There are more and more and more things that we need at TG that's going to grow. Listen, somebody could, I'm not judging nobody. This is for nobody. But what if somebody said, I know we're having communion. The people who I know are going to be on Zoom. We got a good 25 that's been showing up consistent. I'm going to take all the communion cups and I'm going to deliver them. Mind you, you got a month. I don't even have to deliver them. I can mail it to everybody because we're on Zoom and we're so dope. Why we didn't think of that? I'm not judging anybody. I'm not saying that to anybody, but I think we could use our creativity. He's given us the brain. He's given us the destination. We could do more. We could do more. L listen, Pastor ain't got to drink out of no, no little water today because she ain't had no juice. She ain't go shopping. What if I ain't the only one? What if I'm not the only one? Who don't have juice in their house? Excuse me, sir and ma'am. Don't judge me. Ain't no juice here. Logan just broke the last bit. But let's just think about it. There's work to be done. How come, like we're getting together with the kids. How come nobody said, Sister Michelle has been going through with her mother back and forth in the hospital all day. Oh, I didn't know that. Nobody put the message out for her. Did you think about calling her? Did we think about doing it? Did we think about just saying, hey, sis, we love you? Not because somebody texted us. Because if you're in spirit, truth be told, and if you've experienced this, you know what I'm talking about. If you're in spirit, the Holy Spirit would tell you Michelle's in trouble. You don't know what the trouble is. But if you're in spirit, you will know. Bernice is in trouble. Hey, sis, you were on my mind. I don't know why. Because you're in tune. Do more, period. When, and stop saying to yourself, I'm closing right now. This is, I'm at the end. This could be the conclusion. But you know how people say, when we get back into church, huh, it's on, I'm just going to get out there and do, what if we don't go back into a church? We will. But what if, just what if, what are you doing today? What are you going to do this week? Did you call somebody? Did anybody call Ashley G? Ashley called me the other day. I literally wanted to cry. She said, I don't want nothing. Ashley G said, I don't want nothing. Pastor, I don't want nothing. I just wanted to say hi. I'm like, I can't think. I was a mess. I just thought it was, she didn't know what type of week I was having. She didn't know how much pressure and stress I had on my back, but she just came by and took the brick off. I'm like, girl, well, let me tell you about all my problems right now in my life, child, you know? But how, how much did that cost her? What did, the, we're talking about stuff that don't cost. Let's talk about thought. You know, I think about Angie, who's so thoughtful, and I'm always telling her, gosh, I'm not thoughtful like that. I'm not going into a, Angie will go into a store, say if Rob said, you know, I was looking at this nice, shiny pen. You were just talking about the pen. Angie's going to go into the store like, Rob was looking for a pen. Let me go down these last seven aisles and see if I can find a pen. Me, if Rob said a pen, like, wow, that's nice, Rob. I hope you get your pen, buddy. I'm not a thoughtful person like that. <laughs> I'm not a thoughtful person like that. But just because I'm not thoughtful in that way, Angie had to bring to my attention, yeah, but Dom, you were, if Rob was in trouble, you would pray, you would storm heaven down. You would turn the plate down for him. I'm like, all right, but I ain't going to get you a pen, Rob. I'm just not going there. Angie's going to do it. And that's how it is. But think about it. I'm, I'm joking right now. But you know how people say, when the church open back up, I'm going to do more. That's not way. We need you right now. Our Zoom should be popping. You know why? Because this is our only platform right now. We should be inviting people. Hey, you, and reminding them the day before or the morning of, here's the link just in case they forgot. What are we doing? It's still, we're still kingdom building. We're building each other. There's more people in the world who's sitting home and don't want to be bothered with a church building. 
We are, are, are at an advantage. Are we using it? I'm just saying, do more, period. Everybody, in any capacity, wherever you are. I'm sure there's a husband at home who could do more, period. I'm sure there's a wife. I ain't gonna get on you. I'm just gonna be like, keep doing what you're doing because I'm almost sure you're doing a good job, sweet girl. <laughs> but even as a wife, as a child, what do you do to help your parent? Do more, period. What, what do we do? Think about it. If you're home, think about it. Look at the young people. You may not have kids. What did I do to help my mom? Did I call her? Did I check in? When I say do more, it's never just all physical stuff either. This is, let me just put a thought on my brain to do more. Listen, this is a simple message. And I, I pray that you are inspired and encouraged. I'm going to do more. I'm going to be on time for the Zoom on Friday. I'm going to be, I'm going to be sitting here waiting for them. I'm going I'm to make time for my church. I'm going to make time. I'm going to make time for my Zoom because I want to do more, period. That's it. The whole topic today is do more, period. So I hope you enjoyed the message. I hope you are inspired. I hope you are encouraged to just do more. There is plenty of work that has to be done for the kingdom of God. And when I went to this conference and saw how many jobs there were, how many ushers were needed for 10,000 people, how many food concession stands were needed, what if, T, what if there was a TG, a cafe? TG had their own cafe. Who's going to run that? Let's think big. Stop being in the small mind. Think big. What if? Who's passing out tissues? What are we doing? Easter is coming up. Michelle, with everything that she has on, is going to go get Easter baskets and deliver them. Mich hey, Michelle, I'm not going to call you and say this. I'm going to tell you. Maybe one of them will call you. Hey, you want me to drive it around? Because I'm my body tired. I've been driving a lot. But think about it. You could call her and say, put the Michelle, what day are you putting those baskets together? Let me help you. Let's meet somewhere. You take five, you take five, and I take five. Everybody got Easter baskets for their kids. Why not? Because we don't think. Let's think to just do more, period. More for TG, more for each other, more for our families, more for our community. There is so much to think. Listen, we're going to open back up. Where are your suggestions? Where is your mind? What are you thinking? I just don't have, I'm not the only person who has a vision for TG. I'm going to be telling the entire world about God. I promise you. I've told Thumbelina Newsom is going to be telling the entire world about God. And guess what? TG is a part of that. But I got to go before y'all. I got to be in the global mindset. We have to start thinking globally. Where are we going? What are we doing? What is, what is your job going to be when we open back up? Start working on it now. Start getting your paper together. Start getting your teams together. Where's your team? Is, is your, is, are you on a team and haven't done your job? Have you made the, say if you're on a team and you got a leader, have you made the job worse for the leader? I promise you, don't, whatever you do, never bring the leader problems. If you bring problems, you tag on solutions at the end. It helps. Or if you're at your wit's end, I don't, I don't know what to do. I understand. But come, come. Don't come with burdens. Don't come with that. Come with joy. Listen, transfer sometimes. You know what? Hey, Anita, I just called to see if you were smiling. Teresa, I just called to tell you I, was, I love you. Transfer that good energy. I don't know what your day is like at work. I don't know what your day was like at church. I don't know who was just arguing. I don't know nothing. Do more, period. Stay blessed, stay encouraged. That is the end of our service. I will see you guys in an hour. And if does anybody have any questions? Thank you, Lamar. I see you clapping, fool. I see you and Denise over there clapping. Does anybody have any uh, questions, anything they want to say? Hey, heaven. Woo -woo. All, All right. right. Hey, girl. Does anybody want to close out for us? Listen, what was the topic today? Let's stop right here. Rob is laughing. What was the topic today? Do more. Here we go. Come on now with the Holy Ghost. Come on, Lance. Let's go for it. Uh, dear Father in heaven, thank you for bringing us here today, Father. Father, we bless you. Um, 
We thank you for the blessings that you bestowed upon us, Father. Father, through the peaks and the valleys in our life, Father. Father, we give you all glory and praise that you will let us out today, Father, and that we shall meet, Father, that we shall um, congregate, Father. Father, that you shall bless all of us today, Father. Father, in your name, Son, Jesus Christ's name, I say amen. 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 All right, guys. I'll see you guys soon. Love you guys. Bye, guys. I love you. Bye. 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 See you soon. Okay.